It's hard to describe the relationship between you and your dog. Uh, some people call their dogs their kids. Others say that they're companions or emotional support animals. For me, I've always just said, he's my dog. Uh, ever since I was a little kid, I had always wanted to have a dog. Uh, my dad had a dog when he was a kid. My grandfather had dogs. Um, it wasn't until I was around like 12 or 13, life kind of started to get difficult for the first time. We had experienced a death in the family, uh, a lot of changes, a lot of ups and downs with that. But that, that was when we got Zier. Um, I'll, I'll never forget the first day that we brought Zier home. He was, he was nervous, you know, new surroundings, couldn't calm down. And for some reason, he just sat right beside me and went to sleep. And I guess from that point on, he was my dog. As a kid, for me, having a dog was, in my mind, everything that I needed in life. Because, you know, especially since I was homeschooled, I was with him all day, where we just be in the backyard, teaching him tricks, playing different games that I made up. And I never really did anything by myself after that. Looking back on it, I think that my favorite part about having a dog was that I knew he was my dog. Like, I'm the one who follows around the house. I'm the one responsible for feeding them, walking them, doing all that type of stuff. But you know, also the age that I got here, I think having him taught me a lot too. But I remember we learned about this condition that puppies can have called um, coprophagia. And basically what it is, it's when the dog is going to the bathroom, it, um, it turns around and eats it. Yeah, yeah. And Zir had coprophagia. <laughs> he, he had it real bad. Th thankfully, he grew out of it, but, but he had it for sure. But we read online that if you put hot sauce on it, it repels them. So you can imagine 13 year old Deuce just standing in the middle of the yard, seven in the morning with a bottle of hot sauce, man, waiting for a fresh load. <laughs> and, and if that doesn't form an unbreakable bond, I don't know what will. Well, Zier had to stay at the vet overnight, but I go the next day to get him and they give me a story about how he broke out of the crate and then they tell me how he just destroyed the place. But he was an escape artist. If it was a metal crate, the wire metal crate, yeah, he could get out. I didn't know if I was embarrassed or proud. <laughs> Having him in the beginning for me was, I didn't like it. <laughs> but as time went on, to me, his personality was very close to Deuce. So it felt like having another sibling. Well, ha having Shepherds before, I know he was, he was very smart. Very smart, curious. Uh, wants what he wants, uh, wants to go outside when he wants to go outside, uh, begs and does things to make you do what he wants you to do. Uh, like for example, in the morning, he would run and get into the chair because he wanted to treat. And I know he just did that with me because it was early in the morning. Zier acts like Deuce. Sometimes he listens, sometimes he doesn't. He has his own mind. So like, he knows that we don't want him to get on the couch like that's he knows that's not okay but i remember when we would all leave and maybe forget something in the house and have to come back inside and he would already be on the couch but we would catch him with his back legs still up like he knew he was he was this close to getting away with it <laughs> which is why i told people like he's He's well trained. It's just he's not obedient. Like he knows how to do what you want. He he just may not do it. He's like my other kid. Um, the one that 
doesn't require as much as the rest. I can go out in the backyard and do a campfire, fire pit at night, light it, and I'm not worried. Because you don't go in that backyard without him. He truly was part of the family. It was, um, I mean, I know people say it a lot, but with all that being said, we still knew that Deuce was his, his guy. You know, he had personalities with everybody, but no matter what, he wanted to be with Deuce. But, you know, fast forward a few years later, when I started getting into, like, photography and film and stuff like that, Zier, he, he was the thing that I shot most. You know, just taking pictures. Uh, we made a few short films. But even when I wasn't shooting Zier, you know, he's always been a, a part of it somehow. Like, back when I was filming Pum Mondays, you know, he'd be in the background somewhere or just barking, messing up takes. But because of over time, he's he's just a large part of everything that I've made. Like even right now, my favorite photo that I've ever taken is of me and Zier sitting at the fire pit. Like I feel like it just, it sums it up. Cause the way it happened, you know, we, we were just sitting back there and I was like, man, this would, this would be a tight pick. So I go grab the tripod, set up the shot, put Zier in the chair and in the picture it actually looks like we're having a conversation but really I was just trying to tell him to stay in the chair until the timer went off because you know he wasn't trying to cooperate as usual but you know but that picture I feel like it just it sums it up you know you could be there by yourself but instead you're you're hanging with your dog and uh, that's that's what me and Zier did. But, you know, at, at the end of the day, I think, I think that's what a dog is, you know? Especially when, when you grow up with your dog, kind of like I have. Like, they just become a part of who, who you are in some ways. I, I took care of him like he was my kid. Um, he's, he was in emotional support some, sometimes. And uh, and he was a companion because he, in a way, he was my best friend because he was my dog. But you know, um, we we had some good times these uh, throughout these eight eight years, um, which is why I can say that uh, that that he was a good dog.